last meeting as chair, so I'm going to buck the rules and start a minute early. What are they going to do? Kick me out for being chair? Probably. <laughs> All right, call standing committee, uh, corporate and community services standing committee for February 3rd, 2020. Today we acknowledge that this event is taking place on the traditional territory of the indigenous people of Turtle Island, including the traditional lands of the Anish in a Beck and Haudenosaunee and Ojibwe peoples and on lands connected with the Lake Simcoe Saga Treaty of 1818. This is the home to a diverse range of indigenous people whom we recognize as contemporary stewards of the land and vital contributors to our society. So before we do the adoption of the agenda, I would like to uh, bring up Executive Director Skinner to introduce our new Manager of Customer Service. Ms. Skinner, is that okay? Yes, thank you, Chair. And maybe I'll introduce from here, and if uh, uh, the, uh, uh, you would like it, I'll get her to say a couple of words about her background once I do the introduction. So, um, in February 2019, Council endorsed an organizational realignment, so less than a year ago, to um, uh, strengthen the town's ability to deliver better services. And uh, that involved the creation of several centers of excellence, one about customer and corporate services. And it recognized that the needs of the people uh, served by the town are changing, that people wanted better and more convenient and efficient ways to access the town services. And they would be of great interest to, uh, to this committee in particular, uh, being about the uh, community services and corporate services. So things like online, mobile devices, uh, extended hours, potentially weekend hours, multiple mediums, um, you know, consolidating things in one or, or a, a set of, a small set of locations. So that resulted in the Customer and Corporate Services Division, um, and then I came on board in August. And today I'm very, very pleased to, to tell you that Ingrid uh, Masiak has uh, the position now of Manager of Customer Service. She came on board in early January. Um, I'm very pleased we were able to hire someone of her caliber. Uh, she has a great track record, she'll tell you briefly about, an impressive energy level and a very collaborative nature, which I hope you'll, you'll all be exposed to in the months and years to come. And uh, with your okay, I'll ask her to do that brief update on her background. Welcome, Ms. Maciak, and welcome to the town of Holland. Good evening, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Executive Director Skinner. Um, so just a quick uh, background from myself. I come from uh, Rogers Communications with uh, over 15 years of customer service experience at various levels. Um, myself, you know, as a frontline agent, and then as uh, many years as a manager through change management, contact optimization, communication. So a various array, you know, through the uh, different levels of customer service, and really focusing on providing excellent service, you know, to to, to all of our customers. So, thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, before we read the adoption of the agenda, I'd like to point out to the people at home, the people in the audience, that our Deputy Mayor is uh, here this evening, filling in for our Mayor, who is away on a personal matter, so welcome Deputy Mayor Hall. Uh, I'm looking uh, for a mover and a seconder that the content of the Community Service Sustaining Committee agenda for February 3rd, 2020 be adopted as presented. Moved by Councillor Berman, seconded by Councillor Comey. All those in favour? Excellent. As I mentioned at the start of the meeting, tonight is the uh, election process for a new chair and a new vice chair. So I will be stepping down as chair, and uh, Councillor McLeod, who is the vice chair right now, will arguably be stepping down as vice chair, and we will uh, move forward and see who takes care of us over the next year. So, great success, and I will turn it over to the clerk. Through the chair of committee, members of the public, I will Firstly, review the election process for this evening for the positions of chair and vice chair. Any member can nominate another member. You can also nominate yourself. Since we have a small membership to the group, those membership nomina those nominations do not require a seconder. I will open the nominations, uh, see who all uh, will be nominated. I will close nominations, ensure that uh, the individuals that are nominated will accept that nomination and then I will undertake the election process. If there's any questions as we move along, please feel free to ask. So at this point, I would like to open the nominations for the position of chair. I will nominate Councillor Berman. Thank you. 
looking for further nominations. Are there any further nominations? Councillor Comey. I nominate our Vice Chair, Councillor McLeod. Certainly looking for any further nominations for the position of Chair. If this is a tell, but I'll nominate Councillor Comey. And procedure purposes, the Mayor, and in this case the Deputy Mayor, cannot be elected as Chair of the Committee. So that leaves that nomination out. So unless Councillor Madden would like to nominate himself. <laughs> no. Okay. So at this point, I will actually close the nominations and I will be asking those nominees if they are interested in remaining in the election for the position of chair. The first that was nominated was Councillor Berman to accept your nomination. And I, I decline. Thanks. And next is Councillor McLeod. Do you accept your nomination? I accept with pleasure. And Councillor Comey, do you accept your nomination? I decline. Okay. I can thereby declare by acclamation that the position of chair will go to Councillor Marion McLeod. I will now open up the election for the position of vice chair. Can I have nominations for the position of vice chair? Councillor Berman. I'll nominate Councillor Comey. Thank you. Is there any further nominations for the position of vice chair? Calling the first, calling the second time, and then third and final time for the position of vice chair. See no further nominations. Councillor Comey, do you accept the nomination for position of vice chair? Accept. Thank you. At this point, I would like to announce that by acclamation, Councillor Comey will be this committee's new vice chair. Congratulations. At this point, we'll have the new chair take over the meeting. <laughs> I will take my name and sit down. Thank you very much for the year. It's been fantastic and I look forward to the next. and weird. Uh, so next up on our agenda is uh, business arriving from the previous meeting. Any uh, members of the committee uh, with uh, business arising from the previous meeting which was held on January the 6th? Seeing none, we'll go on to item number five, declarations of pecuniary interest. And in accordance with our Code of Conflict, Procedural Bylaw, and Municipal Conflict of Interest Act, members must uh, file with the clerk a written statement of the conflict for inclusion in the conduct, uh, Conflict of Interest Registry. If you have any, please say so now. Seeing none, deputations. Have we any deputations today? This is moving right along. Deputations, none. Reports and minutes of other committees and boards. Uh, 7.1. Recommendation is that minutes of the various committees and boards provided below be received. Uh, calling with downtown BIA Board of Management minutes from December the 12th, 2019. Any comments, errors, or omissions that ought to be discussed? Any vote on that? Yes. Uh, so, do we accept all? We do we accept? Okay, we'll do all three of them. Anyone from the uh, committee, from the Downtown BIA Board of Management in attendance or a member of the public who wishes to speak to this report? Seeing none, uh, does the committee wish to accept this report? Need a mover. Councillor Berman, I need a seconder, Councillor Deputy Mayor Hall. All in favor? 6.1.2 Museum Advisory Committee minutes from November the 21st of 2019. Any members of the public or members of that uh, committee wish to speak to this report? Seeing none, uh, does any member of council or the committee want to speak to it? Councillor Comey, no. You look as though you have an, I have an opinion. No. Okay. Um, we have a mover and a seconder to accept that report, please. Councillor Comey, Deputy Mayor Hall. All in favor? That is accepted. 6.1.3, the Trails Advisory Committee minutes from December the 11th of 2019. Any members of the public or members of that committee have anything that they want to say about that report? Seeing none, committee members, may I have a mover and seconder to accept that report, please? 
Councillor Berman, Councillor Comey. All in favor? Moving on to, uh, that is accepted. Uh, now, uh, item number eight, staff reports. PRC 2020-1, Town of Collingwood Urban Forest Management Plan. May I have, do I move this or not? Director Culver, you have things to say about the Urban uh, Forest Management Plan. And I believe Ms. Martin is going to speak to us on this issue. Thank you. Yeah, through you, <coughs> Chair, I'll, I'll defer to Wendy uh, to help set this up and introduce the speaker. Super. Good evening, Chair and Committee members. I'm very pleased today to present the uh, Town of Collingwood Urban Forest Management Plan. It's uh, been in the works for a couple of years. We were fortunate enough to receive a grant from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities to assist us in the development of this plan. Uh, tonight, I'm uh, honored to present uh, John McNeil, who is a member of the team. The um, firm Williams and Associates um, were the uh, con consultants to develop the plan, and John McNeil is a member of the team. John has 30 years of experience as a manager of Forester with the town of Oakville, and his expertise in municipal forestry has guided this plan to be realistic, yet encouraging to force this community to pri prioritize the urban forest and the threat that it is facing. So I'd like to um, welcome John, and he will provide the presentation. Thank you very much, Wendy, for those kind words. Uh, good evening, members of the uh, Corporate and Community Advisory uh, Committee, uh, members of the public and staff. I'm very pleased to provide for you this evening an introduction to the Town of Collingwood's first Urban Forest Management Plan. Oops. Management Plan is focusing on the public tree and it provides a framework for the planning, design, maintenance, and risk management issues associated with trees on municipal lands. It also provides a future framework for trees on private property. An urban forest management plan essentially is a long-term strategic document that sets with the community's participation a vision for Collingwood's urban forest and a roadmap, if you will, for its eventual attainment. Some of the highlights of your urban forest management plan include adopting a proactive maintenance management strategy for your town trees. Second, developing an asset management strategy that recognizes the public tree as green infrastructure, and thirdly, creating new policies, new standards for the urban forest, urban fabric, and network to support blending gray and green infrastructure. Why? Why is the urban forest management plan important for the town of Collingwood? Whether big or small, urban or rural, municipalities are responsible for more than half of Canada's public infrastructure, critical assets that support the economy and quality of life according to F Federation of Canadian Municipalities past president, Vicki May Ham. She goes on to continue, she continues with building resilient, sustainable and livable communities define our future. And so this urban forest management plan is within that context. The vision that the community helped develop for Collingwood's urban forest management plan is that the town of Collingwood values the urban forest and the contribution and towards livability in addition to the other benefits that urban forest provides for the community. The town is committed to its sustainable management of the urban forest, as well as supporting community action and stewardship to maintain, renew, and enhance this natural resource for future generations. And within the document before you tonight, the management plan, this vision that the community helped uh, develop is supported by a range of guiding principles and goals. The context and need for the plan. Collingwood's urban forest provides essential services for the community. It has much to contribute from reducing the costs of stormwater, on the, uh, stormwater costs on the drainage system to supporting and uh, cleaning the air that which we breathe. In 2015, Council endorsed a community-based strategic plan with a vision that includes supporting a healthy lifestyle. One of the objectives of this 
a community document, was the preservation of the natural environment, which had three action items. Updating the natural heritage system, continue to request the dedication of environmentally sensitive lands through the development process, and review and update the tree canopy policies. Now through the Urban Forest Management Plan, which will be periodically updated, and over time it will influence other key corporate documents, such as the town's upcoming official plan review. So what is the plan? It's a necessary vision for the town. It provides long-term development for the creation of a vision of an urban forest uh, forestry department. Council can understand the 10-year costs and implications of the vision and generally endorse them, although individual timing and uh, individual budgets are yet to come forward, and provides information on how to pick up some of the uh, opportunities that are provided from what we call low-hanging fruit or some of the uh, e more easily attainable initiatives to get the plan rolling and enables action by staff for further analysis and the resource needs that can be brought before council. What the plan is not is a request for individual funding tonight or approval of individual projects. Those will come naturally through your corporate uh, formal budget, annual, annual budget request programs. And it's not a final suite of policies and standards because much more work has been identified in the plan for staff and others to work, for, to work on. So let's look at some of the plan findings, some of the highlights that are contained within the 150 pages of the document that's before you. What I particularly like is this toolbox that we provided for, for the town. It's called the Criterion Indicators for Sustainable Urban Forest Management. This is a tool that's used widely in communities across North America and Canada and the United States. Why? Because it provides a snapshot of where the town is right now and where it can attain to go forward in the future through a series of Criterion Indicators which essentially are performance measurements. So we provided 25 performance measurements for the town to measure and monitor itself against over time. Ideally, a municipality would like to see most of the numbers generate towards the right side of the chart under the good or optimal uh, columns. But let's see where the town uh, lies today. Under the vegetation resource, we see uh, skewing towards the right side of the chart with a number towards good and optimal. And that's a uh, commendable and reflection, positive reflection on the town of Collingwood. You've already made commitments to renewing your infrastructure through updating your uh, inventory of town and active street park trees. On the community framework, here we see a balance spread amongst the criteria with one that stands out to us in particular and that's an area called the community involvement or the general awareness of uh, trees as a community resource. That was picked up by your staff during this exercise, the project team evaluation last year, and it was reiterated during the public open house in the, in the spring, which I'll be speaking more about. You value, your citizens value the urban forest, and we see this as a strategic strength for the town to leverage as you move the recommendations forward in your urban forest management plan. And finally, under the resource management approach, we see uh, criteria that tend to fall towards the left side of the chart which isn't uncommon for smaller municipalities. And this reflects the resources that you have to put the urban forest and predominantly a, a reactive management approach currently to your urban forest management. What other uh, plan findings have we, have we, as a result of some of the data that was gathered? Well, the tree inventory project. Collingwood has over 9,000 street and active trees. Nope. There's over 50 species, but note the distribution that's rather skewed towards the maple species. And from best management practices, and in order to increase the resilience of your urban forest to such things as climate change moving forward, this helps um, guide you to redistribute some of your planting initiatives moving forward and increase your biodiversity of your urban forest away from a heavy concentration to maple. And the canopy study that was done, we used a tool called iTree Canopy, which is developed by the United States Forest Service. It provides highly accurate, statistically measurable um, analysis of your canopy structure. And we found that the town's canopy in 2019 study has moved up to 31%, the tree canopy. And when we add the understory, being the shrub and the layer beneath the tree, if you will, it has now at 38% canopy, uh, urban forest canopy cover throughout the whole municipality. Another benefit of using the iTree tool is that it quantifies the value of the ecological services that the community's urban forest provides. And that value is measured at $1.1 million a year. 
That's very significant. That shows, that's a result of the amount of carbon that the urban forest sequesters. It's a result of reducing the harmful small particulate matter that is in the air. And it's in the result of reducing ozone. Ozone is a precursor to smog. So all these things are reduced to the value of $1.1 million a year by your urban forest. And finally, community engagement. This plan, as Wendy mentioned, spent a great deal of time uh, engaging with key stakeholders and members of the public. On April the 24th last year, nine key stakeholders were involved in a, a half-day uh, brainstorming um, a planning charrette for the urban forest. That evening, 40 people attended an open house. And in the month following, through your Engage um, Collingwood, 101 people completed two online surveys. This level of community support is shown to be very important. The engagement process demonstrates that the community support will help move the initiatives in your plan forward. For example, in response to the survey questions regarding the importance of trees, the requirement for budget increases to support tree planting and maintenance and achieving the town's canopy cover goals, the online survey showed a, a support between 94 and 100 percent agreement or acceptance. Very commendable. So where do we go next? What is in store for the future of Collingwood uh, upon adoption of the Urban Forest Management Plan? In order to help move those criteria indicators towards the good and optimal levels that communities uh, 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 try to attain. Well, staff will bring forward projects over the coming uh, first five years of the plan from anywhere from creating a town forester position, which may you may see as a, a plan champion, if you will, to help bring forward and enunciate some of the initiatives that are going to be uh, some of the projects that will be coming forward, all the way through to updating your corporate app, your existing corporate asset strategy to reflect uh, trees as green infrastructure, so to, so to value to evaluate the public tree. And in the phase following uh, in years five to ten, we see initiatives brought forward by staff from creating a new urban forestry unit all the way through to establishing an urban forest advisory committee made up of a broad cross-section of representatives from your community. So in conclusion, we see the urban forest management plan as a document that represents what the community has told us that it wants and what you as councillors have told staff that the community needs. Through the collaboration of the town departments that have been involved in this project over the last year, and I would like to give a shout out for Wendy and her staff in particular for uh, helping keep this project uh, moving forward very effectively and efficiently. You're very keenly aware of the uphill climb that's in, going to be involved in um, building the capacity to fund the projects to attain the vision in this, this do uh, document. But in doing so, Collingwood joins a growing list of municipalities across Ontario with urban forest management plans that help sustain its urban forest. Adoption of the urban forest management plan is a positive start. I thank you for your attention and I'd be welcome, I'd welcome any of your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McNeil. Do we have any questions from the public regarding this uh, project which was just uh, concluded in Shantua? Come on up. Question. What is what is the desirable, desirable? Could you come to the Could you come to the podium, please? And I think you have to fill something out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm George Powell. I live at Women Anger Street in Collingwood. Uh, the issue that I have is I'm, I, he showed 31.4 percent as as a vegetative cover, and I was the question I would ask is what is a a good a good uh, standard? How, where should we be in, in trying to do that? And, what I've noticed in living where I do, uh, in, in our mature neighborhood, the trees are, are being cut down for uh, intensification and so forth. I understand that. And, and that's being allowed. So then when the tree comes down, 70 foot pine tree, some maple trees, major maple trees, what is being put back is, is a tree by the people that are uh, doing the landscaping. The issue is that uh, you know, a, a, tree, a, th uh, a caliper tree <coughs> and, and what you've taken down, there's no comparison. And so I think there should be some uh, you know, uh, tit for tat on the thing. What you should be doing is increasing 
the amount of planting that has to be done somewhere in town to look after what, what vegetation uh, cover has been taken away. Thank you. Mr. McNeil, do you have a response to Mr. Powell's question regarding uh, regarding replacement of trees? I do, and to the point about the canopy cover target that I first heard the first part of this question through the chair, I think that's an excellent question. And one of the criteria and indicators that I showed you in that chart actually happens to be canopy cover. And that was a number that we, the low number that we could not rank for the town of Collingwood because there is no one number that I could give you tonight uh, to the, to, to, through, through the chair to, to the delegation. Canopy cover has to be specific to the municipality. We should not grab numbers what other municipalities are doing. Collingwood has the opportunity to set its own canopy cover target and we've introduced the tool that uh, for the town to make use of through the iTree canopy suite that we used to measure your existing canopy. There's another tool within that suite that will actually set a forecast for where Collingwood could be say in 40 years or whatever staff sets as a, a vision. And through doing this study that we recommend in the plan, you can set a canopy cover that is scientifically um, supported and is unique and reflects the particulars of the town of Collingwood. So it's premature, in other words, to, to, answer, that, uh, to answer the question uh, properly. We, we don't know what the number should be, but the Collingwood can certainly find that out. And I have very have faith that it will through one of the recommendations in the plan. Does that address the question adequately? I believe that response is for the first half of the question. The second one was about replacing smaller, bigger trees with smaller trees, I believe, Mr. Powell. And the recommendations contained therein, I think. When I was a town forester in Oakville, I often got asked to plant larger caliper trees because people have a, some people tend to have a mindset of wanting instant gratification but that doesn't work with the biology often of trees. And so I found it most successful to plant a tree of a smaller caliper, say about an inch and a half or 40 mil, uh, and then properly uh, water, fertilize, and add mulch to it. And then it will do very well as it um, becomes established. To plant a bigger caliper tree, the risk of it failing grows uh, with the size of the caliper tree. And then you often are, end up with nothing. So I would counsel to start modest, but invest in proper uh, stewardship like a watering program. Um, I'm just figuring out my procedures here. Uh, Director Culver, can you speak to that question as well? Um, through you, Chair. Uh, I think that uh, Mr. Powell's question actually also refers to the idea of planting more trees elsewhere in replacement for larger trees lost through development. And I think that that is actually under consideration uh, with the planning department, um, a you know, tree for tree type of a formula to be established. Uh, I don't think we have an answer for it at this moment, but I do know it's under investigation. Thank you, Director Culver. Is there, are there any other questions around the gallery? Come on down. Through you, Chair. Uh, I think what I was trying to say is that the vegetation, I, I've flown over this place a number of times. Let me tell you, it's changed. Okay, you, you fly over the new developments and the, the first thing that goes down is the trees and, the, and they don't come back as fast as everybody around here thinks. So what I'm trying to get the town, the town to do is if you take a, a 70 foot uh, tree out, that you put back more than just one Tree, and you can put it somewhere where you want to put it, where the town wants it, to, to, to keep the canopy or make sure the canopy doesn't shrink. Director Culver, can you respond to, uh, to that? Is there a plan in place? That, I do believe that there was some conversation at the uh, at the council table uh, regarding one of the projects that's coming forward about a two for one replacement. Is that uh, something that we can contemplate, or is that something that is being contemplated? Uh, through you, Chair, yes, the, that's actually the formula I was referring to. I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. Um, there, there, during the uh, discussion around the Huron Ontario sidewalk, uh, Council made it clear that, that uh, it wasn't acceptable to remove one tree and replace it with actually less, a tr less than a tree in, in that uh, same area. So they um, actually positioned for uh, replacement that exceeded uh, the number that was being re reduced. So 
I, I think that that thinking is in play, and I believe the planning, like I say, the planning department is uh, taking that on in terms of developing a formula that will be uh, applied to future development. Thank you, Director Calder. Any other questions from the gallery? There's a little sheet as well that we'd like you to fill out when you're done so we know who you are. Okay. Um, I have more of a comment than a question. Um, my name, thank you for the opportunity to speak, by the way. Um, my name is Sophie Orling. Um, this past summer, we had a tree in front of our house, a 130 year old sugar maple that was cut down, which we were really disappointed about. It was a very beautiful tree. Um, I think this urban forest management plan is a very important step in the right direction. There are many benefits to integrating nature and trees into our urban areas. And while they're very nice to look at, they also serve an important purpose and have value, such as the health and social benefits, as well as climate change mitigation as trees absorb carbon, and climate change adaption as trees also reduce the effects of storm and storm runoff, as was mentioned in the plan. Um, it's very important to put a plan like this into place However, it's equally important to follow through with this plan in future budgets and invest in maintaining and improving our urban forest, which will ensure sustainability of our, our environment and the livability of Collingwood for current and future generations to come. Um, I just wanted to say, again, thanks for putting this plan in place. It is a really good step in the right direction. Thank you, Ms. Orley. There's a little sheet behind you, too. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the public? And so we will need a uh, mover and a seconder to, uh, to put this on the table. Do I read the whole darn thing right there? I do, don't I? 8.1 PRC 2020-01 Town of Collingwood Urban Forest Management Plan Staff Report. PRC 2020-1 be received and Council adopt the Urban Forest Management Plan and the recommendations contained herein. And the Council approve the concept of an urban forestry unit operating within the Public Works and Engineering Department with collaboration with other departments and the Council directs staff to implement the recommendations through annual budget requests and operational planning. May I have a mover and a seconder, please? Deputy Mayor Howell, Councillor Comey, and do we have things to say, members of this committee? Questions, comments? Deputy Mayor Howell. Uh, just a, uh, two maybe quick questions. The first one, just so that I'm clear, the the percentage that we're using, because at the very outset of your presentation, you mentioned like we're focused on the urban municipal land. So are those percentages for the entire municipal footprint or just municipal land? I've missed that and I apologize. Um, Mr. McNeil, or should uh, Director Culver answer this one? If you, it's your pleasure, I would uh, appreciate it if Mr. McNeil can answer this. Thank you, Mr. McNeil. Uh, through the chair, it's for the um, entire municipal boundary, urban plus rural. And so just looking at the percentages from the 2008, 2012, and now this study, we've seen a really nice uh, increase. Uh, and it's nice to see considering a, the amount of development within the built boundary. Uh, and secondly, uh, things like the uh, ML dashboard that have had a, an effect not only here, but elsewhere. Um, so so that's, a, that's a healthy percentage. And, and I won't put you on the I was going to ask the same question that Mr. Powell was in terms of the percentage, but I understand how a percentage would be unique to our community versus another. Um, but I have two, two other very quick questions. One is, um, what is the definition? What is the, the definition between a forester and an arborist? And the, the other question would be, we've got resources through the county, and I'm, I'm asking this from the lens of a council representative who sits at the county as well. And the province didn't change the county in terms of boundaries, but they made it darn clear that we need to be looking at more cooperation with our uh, neighboring municipalities. So maybe Clearview, Wasaga Beach, even Town of Blue Mountains, who are in a different county. Um, what of this could be applied from more of a regional perspective? So I appreciate that's a fairly loaded question, though. We could take a few minutes if you'd like to gather your thoughts. Well, through the chair, it'll come to me. <laughs> uh, with regards to your first question, uh, the, uh, the, the trade of arborist is a, a trade that focuses on a skill set that looks as a the unit of management for the arborist is the single tree. The forester 
in Ontario is registered as a registered professional forester under the For Professional Foresters Act. And the forester, he or she, looks at the forest as a, as a its management unit is the entire forest. So the arborist looks at the individual tree, and the urban forester looks at the whole forest, but that canopy of 38%, if you will. Each has a skill set, and they should work together. Does that help Absolutely. clarify that part? And trees are natural areas, no, 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 no human boundaries, so municipal or other. So it's uh, to, to your point about the urban forest management plan for the town of Collingwood uh, could roll up, if you will, to the count to the county and to your uh, adjoining municipalities in terms of a uh, number of things. Uh, one would be to perhaps set. Uh, each have municipalities set their canopy cover targets and work collaboratively to help achieve them. So you could share strategies and get synergies amongst the, the, the neighboring municipalities for attainment of, of the plan goals. That's one, one thing that comes to mind right away. Thank you. Does anyone? Uh, any other questions from the committee? Okay, I have a couple. Um, I, and uh, to Director Culver, I'm not entirely sure whether you are the one who's going to be responding to this, but I'll put it to you first. Um, the recommendation in this report is regarding, uh, is that it be funded through annual budget requests, but our budget was done six weeks ago. And um, are we thinking of waiting 35 additional weeks to fund any of these activities which are listed as being requested in the year 2020? Uh, to you, Chair, the... Um Staff have been working throughout the development of the Urban Forest Management Plan. Staff have been working to strategize what an internal, uh, like an operational shift might look like. And so we've been in discussions with Public Works about the possibility of a forestry unit being established in their area, which I know it sounds weird to sort of take resources and pare them down, but actually what it does is it creates a, a single point of contact and so a simplification and make, that actually makes the operation more efficient. So we're in those discussions and trying to figure out how that works and what that looks like. Um, that'll take some time and, uh, and, and probably take it to the end of this year where we can make some real good recommendations for council in the next, bu next budget cycle. And so the $500,000 for a bucket truck, um, which is listed in this for the year 2020, which would constitute about 1.7% of tax increase if we were to have included it in our budget discussions back in December, that would not be on the table in your mind for 2020? That's not something you would go looking for? Uh, or that we would that we would be asked to find? Or that Marjorie would be asked to find? <laughs> uh, to you, Chair, no. That's not, that's not part of the 2020 plan. And so then what are we to make of the charts that are in this report? Uh, through you, Chair, to you, Chair, the, I think this is a suggestion that allows us to start some planning and uh, potentially the timing uh, of this report right now uh, allows us to strategize and bring council back uh, a good plan for the future. Um, obviously the budget envelope is closed for uh, 2020, um, but it's not stopping us from moving forward with the recommendations and the plan to strategize for the future and bring you good advice. Thank you. Um, and so what I, I think what we ought to do though is perhaps have a look at um, Clerk Alman, uh, severing uh, the, the and that in this recommendation because unless we uh, unless we're satisfied with Director Culver's rec uh, um, answer regarding that what's in this report will come to the 2021 budget rather than anything to do with 2020. Um, uh, maybe that question is for the CAO. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Nothing in this report impacts on the 2020 budget. The 2020 budget has been closed and the recommendations have been adopted by council. There will be no increase in the 2020 budget to implement any of the recommendations in this report. The recommendations clearly articulate that the recommendations contained herein will be implemented through successive budget deliberations. So we're not going back and revisit the 2020 budget. Terrific. Uh, so we have a mover and a seconder. Uh, do we have any comment? We've had our comments, so uh, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Carried. Staff report P 
PRC 2020-02 Memorial Tree and Bench Policy. And the uh, motion is that staff report PRC 2020-02 be received and that council approve the Memorial Tree and Bench Donation Policy. May I have a, uh, uh, I guess we have to hear from, uh, is this again Director Culver? Director Culver, do you have things to say regarding this report? Uh, thank you, Chair. Just, uh, just uh, that uh, this was a report requested by um, Council uh, following some concerns about the density of benches at uh, Sunset Point. Uh, so uh, the Council put a moratorium on benches and we have not, um, since that moratorium, uh, it purchased any additional benches to be added. Um, however, some have been in, uh, that were purchased previously have been installed. And uh, where we're at now is uh, presenting a, a policy that we hope Council will approve and we can move forward uh, with more clarity. Do we have any um, questions or comments from the gallery regarding this report? Please come forward. Thank you, my name is John McGarry at uh, Sunset Court, the Sunset Point area. And um, the policy request from council came about partly as a result of myself and others uh, uh, asking, of, asking for one given the you know, the increasing density of benches and trees in the Sunset Point area. So, uh, a couple of comments. Very grateful to see this is coming along. And uh, I have some questions, Madam Chair, and I'm not sure if you want them sequentially or all together. What is the protocol? Your guess is as good as mine, so let's muddle our way through together. Let's go one at a time. So, through you, Madam Chair, I'm wondering how the, the, the policy moratorium said that, that any uh, benches and trees currently on the books will proceed and I wonder if we can get some indication of how many might be in the in the plan before this policy kicks in. Director Calder, how many benches have we in the pipe? Uh, through, you, through you, Chair. Um, actually, just looking over at Manager Martin, uh, I do believe there's five, five more to be established based on previously ordered uh, benches. Mr. McGarry? And through you, Chair, Madam Chair, uh, this, this, it's not clear in the policy if this applies only to Sunset Point or to all parks in the town and all municipal trails in the town. You've stolen my question. Director Culver. Yeah, to you, Chair, and, and to the Speaker, it um, absolutely it applies to the entire town. Cool. Thank you. Mr. McGarry. Uh, Madam Chair, 3.2 in the guidelines recommend spacing to a minimum of 10 meters between uh, memorials. And uh, my personal opinion is that that is much, much too high a density. And I would invite councillors to go look at uh, the area. There's a little peninsula of land just running north of the chipper. And if you look in that area, there are, on the eastern shore alone, there are eight memorial benches looking east. And, you know, they're, they're, they may be about 10 meters, maybe even more apart, but it says to me that that is far, far too many. And I personally would like to see that density something more than order of, you know, 50 meters or more. So I think part of the issue is we just have, you know, more benches than can possibly ever be used by, you know, people sitting in the park. So that would be one question. Also, uh, and I don't know if anybody might. Director Culver, can you speak to that? Uh, to you, Madam Chair, the, the density was based on best practices established in other communities, which is where we drew the number, but obviously we're subject to Council's wishes, so if Council wishes to change that number, we'll follow the direction. Mr. McCary. Thank you. That's for you, Madam Chair. Uh, point 3.3, point three, uh, the donor <coughs> would suggest a proposed location and staff retains the right to allow only placement in approved areas. My personal recommendation would be to amend that to suggest that PRC draw up a list of desired locations and then to let the donor select from that. In that way, where the town takes more charge, uh, more control over where the, where the benches and trees would be located, not so much at the, at the whim or the behest of the, of the donor. I'm not, 
that's a comment rather than a question, so thank you. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, also questions concerning trees, uh, you know, and, and what species of trees will be will be allowed or or is the town going to specify the species of tree or do we allow the donor to specify the uh, species of tree? Director Culver? Thank you, Chair, that we, we specify the species and we use the urban forest management plan as a guide. Mr. McCary? Not covered in the, uh, in the policy that I saw is uh, the issue of cost recovery. And there's nothing in the policy talking about pricing. And I have been told that a bench uh, we charge $1,500. And I don't know if that's an accurate number. But if, if it is accurate, that sounds like a very, very low number to me in terms of the, the cost and labor that goes into the placement of a bench. You know, when you're looking at excavation and, uh, and forming for the pad, the ready mix concrete delivered and installed in the pad, uh, the cost of the bench itself, and the cost of labor to assemble and install it. Uh, $1,500 sounds remarkably low. So uh, you know, I would like to see council take a look at something in more in the line of true cost recovery on that, and further to build in a, a, you know, a percentage of the cost because we undertake to maintain those benches and trees for quite a long time in terms of uh, you know, donation period and, and uh, repairs for vandalism and so on. So it would seem you know, to make sense to me that we build in X percent to say, to look at the future cost of uh, maintenance and repairs and, and so on. So. Director Culver, can you speak to the accuracy of the $1,500 number that uh, Mr. McGarry is referring to? Uh, teacher, the, the current number is based on our current assessment of cost recovery, but we would always uh, check back and make sure that we are covering costs because that's the intention of the program. That's all I'm going to ask. Thank you so, so thank much. Thank you very much for the time and opportunity. Wonderful. Anyone else from the gallery has a question to ask regarding this uh, Memorial Tree Bench donation, donation policy? So may I have a mover and a seconder to put this on the table so that we can debate it. Uh, Councillor Vernon and Councillor Madigan. Members of the committee, things to say, questions to ask, comments to make. Seeing none, I have some. Minus further to uh, Mr. McGarry's questions uh, for you, Director Culver. Um, this is not a fundraiser for the town. This is a cost recovery plan and, and nothing more, yes or no? Chair, that's correct. Thank you. And that was it, actually. <laughs> so I'll call the question. Uh, oh, Deputy Mayor Hall. Um, I do, uh, and going back to uh, the original request to have the staff report brought forward. Um, I do agree with Mr. McGarry's assessment and would like to, and I'll leave it to you, uh, but I would put forward an amendment to that effect that it should be the town that develops the list of locations to which uh, a, a member of the community or family, whatever, may then select from as opposed to them going and, and choosing and then being uh, told uh, in disappointment that that isn't uh, an appropriate location. So how would we word that uh, for comments, do you think? We would have to amend the uh, receipt. May I ask one question through you to the director while you're... Yeah. Just to the last point regarding cost recovery, um, this policy, policy doesn't affect the fact that if costs were to double for benches, it doesn't prohibit you, prohibit you from changing the cost that we would uh, charge someone, correct? For you, Chair, that is correct. Okay. Sure. Yeah. We would adapt to whatever we have. Perfect. Uh, prior to dealing with the question uh, regarding amendments, I, I did have another question for you, Doctor, or Doctor, ha, huh? Director <laughs> Culver. Uh, $1,500 for a bench, what do we charge for a tree? Uh, Madam Chair, that's approximately $500. And if you said that it's from a list of, that the town chooses what kind of tree. Um, and so if I were to approach you and wanted to have a, a tree in memoriam of somebody and I wanted it to be an iron wood 
which is a native species, versus a maple, a sugar maple, which is also a native species. That would not be up to me. That would be up to our Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, to be Chair, cor correct, the, there's a, a, a list that we generate that uh, identifies native species that are desirable in their location, um, as well as the location of the tree for best, uh, giving it the best chance of survival. So yeah, we, we dictate that. Thank you. Okay, and on to this business of an amendment. Um, first of all, we would need uh, some wording from you, uh, Deputy Mayor Hall, and then you would also need a seconder for that to happen. Can you give us some suggested wording? Oh. Sarah to the rescue. Sorry, through the chair, um, Deputy Mayor Hall, just confirmation, just the point of the policy that amended to the PRC determining locations, locations versus the donor determining locations. Is that the gist of your amendment? And so, um, do we have a seconder for uh, Councillor, or Deputy Mayor Hall's amendment? Um, uh, Councillor Comey. Yes, and Madam Chair, if I can just offer comment about uh, the clerk's wording. And go ahead, Deputy Mayor Hills, but I'm making an assumption here, maybe Director Copper could clarify that the PRC will select the placement of the bench as outlined in PRC Master Plan. There's a number of suggested locations throughout the PRC Master Plan where the consultant noted we have a distinct lack of seating. For example, it's noted at the museum there's a lack of benches. I don't know if we can incorporate that into the wording, if that's necessary, or it's just always sort of assumed we're going to go back to that PRC Master Plan for direction. Director Culver, can you speak to that? Uh, to you, Chair, yes. If, the, if, it's, if it's put to the PRC to determine the locations, that responsibility, then yeah, we would use the PRC Master Plan as well as the Active Transportation Framework as well as the Cycling Plan for guidance because all of these speak to benches as a, as a positive effect on active transportation. Uh, so that's, that's absolutely the guidance that we would use to go forward. Um, I would say that the challenge we have is that often benches are sentimental and nostalgic and they have to do with people's feelings about someone. So that's always been the challenge in the past. But again, we follow council's direction. So if council dictates that that's how we do it, then we absolutely will do that. And, and Councillor Comey, correct, that's how we would do it. And so, um, Clerk on the floor, do we need to change the wording of that amendment and then look for a seconder on this issue? <coughs> Through Chair McLeod, just for uh, confirmation to Councillor Comey, this is identifying that these benches that the PRC will uh, provide a listing for would be in accordance with approved plans. That's fine, thank you. Can I send a memo to Deputy Mayor Hall? And so we'll call a question on the amendment to the, uh, to the uh, memorial tree and bench 